This increase was blamed on escalating layoffs in the public sector, which has been affected by the decline in tax revenues. This is the trend that is taking place throughout the more urbanized areas of the United States. In a recent article on the impact of the job losses for cities and states that, quote, in January, 363 of 372 metropolitan cities reported higher unemployment rates than the previous year. Let me repeat that. In January, 363 of the 372 metropolitan cities reported higher unemployment rates than the previous year. So that means unemployment in the cities is becoming more and more of a problem. The article continues by pointing out that, quote, more than 35 areas have recorded unemployment rates at 15% or more, including 15 in California and 6 in Michigan. In January, New Jersey's unemployment was 9.9%. Prior to that, the state average rose to 10.1%, its highest rate in over 30 years, unquote. Even Bloomberg News Service reported that, quote, unemployment increased in 27 U.S. states in February and dropped in seven a sign the labor market needs to pick up across more regions to spur consumer spending and sustain economic recovery, unquote. This is, this is Bloomberg, one of the mouthpieces of the capitalist system. Multi-billionaires, and they even have to admit uh, that it's a, it's a serious problem. Citing Labor Department figures, the Bloomberg article notes that the government own, own report, quote, indicates broad-based hiring is yet to develop following the loss of 8.4 million jobs since the recession began in December of 2007. Florida, Nevada, Georgia, and North Carolina set record levels of joblessness last month, unquote. Of course, in the city of Detroit, where unemployment is the highest, and with this 85% African-American population, the problem could actually be described to be at depression levels. The disproportionately high unemployment rate among African Americans has become a cause of concern for many civil rights organizations. I'm talking about mainstream civil rights organizations. Giving voice to this growing impatience of the African American community, a recent article by John A. Powell, who is the executive director of the Kirwan Institute for the Study of Race and Ethnicity, and Hester Willer, we know him, he's the executive director of the Detroit branch of the NAACP, directly addressed the failure of the United States to develop programs that will alleviate massive joblessness among African Americans. Quote, the recent employment figures released by the Bureau of Labor Statistics indicate that black unemployment is on the rise again, returning to 16.5%. These figures remind us that the persistent economic crisis facing the black community is not being addressed by the broad and universal approach to job creation embraced by the Obama administration and the U.S. Congress. More pointedly, Growing evidence suggests that black communities and other marginalized populations are not being adequately reached and are not benefiting from these current economic policies, unquote. This same statement goes on to emphasize that, quote, the reason for this continuing challenge is fairly simple and straightforward. The circumstances that different groups in the United States face are all particular to them and different. For example, black workers are more likely to be physically isolated from job centers, we don't have public transportation here in the city of Detroit that's affected. To be located in poor urban and rural areas and to face conditions that other communities might not. The statement goes on to say, quote, such challenges are not limited to just black workers. Women are less likely to be in the construction trades and other groups may face language barriers. In this post-industrial age, Industrial centers like the city of Detroit have been turned into ground zero for the economic crisis with deindustrialization and the housing crisis creating conditions unlike any other place in the nation. Unfortunately, meaningful federal policies have not been crafted to address this situation, unquote. Even Obama himself refused in a 2009 press conference to commit to implementing programs that specifically address the depression-like conditions in the African-American community across the United States. Although the president has had meetings with civil rights and church leaders, no specific initiatives have been announced and implemented. Powell and Wheeler said also in their statement that, quote, regardless of the conditions the black community faces, the president continually asserts that he is, a president, he is the president of all Americans and cannot just focus on black America. We accept this. We do not call for the black community to receive special treatment. This is what Wheeler uh, and uh, Powell said. 
But we insist that the administration's policies be sensitive to the particular challenges and disproportionate impact of the economic crisis on the black community and other marginalized groups. We contend that, that uh, to meaningfully regard someone as a member of society requires for our government to acknowledge and be sensitive uh, to their circumstances. The failure to do this makes them all but invisible and represents a form of callous disregard, unquote. Also in Detroit, we can deal with the crisis in education. The school system has been severely affected by the decline in employment and the drastic loss in income for individual households. In 2009, Governor Jennifer Granholm appointed an emergency financial manager to purportedly address the growing deficit. Yet the problem of urban education is directly linked to the overall economic crisis and the national oppression of African Americans and other people of color in the United States. Detroit overwhelmingly's African American school system has been in decline for decades due to underfunding, the loss of students, and the foreclosure problem. However, in 1999, when the state took over the uh, Detroit public education system under former Republican Governor John England, the district had a surplus of funds, as well as a voter-approved $1.5 billion bond for capital improvements. After five years of state control, the Detroit system was returned virtually bankrupt. Since 2005, the district has fallen deeper into debt, and with the appointment of an emergency financial manager, the deficit has increased by $100 million during the course of one year. Plans are underway to close over 40 schools and lay off more employees in the district. The ultimate plan uh, is complete privatization and charterization of the schools in Detroit. There has been a substantial growth in charter schools which disallow unions as well as direct parental involvement. Parents, teachers, students, and community have been outraged at the plans to close more schools in Detroit. There have been demonstrations by unions against the proposed changes imposed by the state under Granholm's direction. The debt incurred by the district is hampering its ability to function. 80% of the state aid is being directed to service the debt to the banks. A lawsuit to halt the emergency financial managers from implementing academic decisions and the closing of schools without the involvement of the locally elected Detroit School Board won a preliminary injunction in Wayne County Circuit Court yesterday on April 16. However, the response of the state and the actual outcome of the case will not necessarily result in keeping all the schools open that are slated to close. What is needed is a broad-based effort on the part of the students, the parents, the unions, and the community to the question legitimacy of Public Act 72 that mandates the appointment of emergency financial managers in local governments and school districts. The systematic underfunding of education in, in a majority African American district and a general decline in the social wage of working people are at the root cause of the crisis in education. Now let's talk very briefly about the pension funds and the further privatization of health care. Two other areas of concern in Detroit are the proposal to transfer the city worker pension funds out of the control of an elected trustee board and to place them under the municipal employees retirement system, which is facing a funding crisis itself. There was widespread opposition to these plans. And the city of Detroit city, of, city Council passed a resolution in opposition to the transfer. However, the state legislature has to address the issue. And the plans to transfer the pension funds has bipartisan support, bipartisan support in Lansing. In addition, the Detroit Medical Center is under siege by the Vanguard Health System, which is seeking to take control of the nonprofit entity. Although there have been statements <coughs> indicating that receiving hospital will continue to provide care to uninsured patients, many people do not trust the incoming private group. Several nonprofit health care organizations say that the sale is illegal and may challenge the plans in court. Nonetheless, such a critical issue as health care for working people and the poor requires the mass mobilization of the people in Detroit and throughout the region. Right. These decisions related to school closings, the seizure of pension funds, and the further privatization of health care are coming at a time when the national census is being taken. Mm -hmm. These assaults on working people in Detroit are really designed to continue the disempowerment of the residents of the city and to further exploit their labor and resources consequently driving more people out of the area and providing a rationale for the, quote, downsizing, unquote, of the municipality. 